This is simpler than it appears. All you gotta do is remember this guy's name, Horkheimer. His material is impossible to read. Nobody understands it except a small group of his followers. His followers are in uh, high places in college uh, and academia all the way down to high school, I suppose. The teachers are indoctrinated with the theories of Horkheimer. These teachers may or may not know that Horkheimer and his friends are Marxists who came from Germany, forced out of Germany in World War II. They came here, they fled here to escape Hitler. Some of them stayed. Their motive was to over, overrun, overthrow, destroy the so-called bourgeois capitalist class. They believed that that was the problem in the world. The capitalists, the businessmen, and the bourgeois class that enabled them. You and me, we are the problem. So what they did was launched a campaign of propaganda. Since they could not instigate a revolt among workers, they had to find other people to use as pawns to overthrow the United States of America. They had to find other people as pawns in place of the workers, because our workers were happy. So they found that minorities and certain groups, they found certain groups that they could propagandize. Their goal was to destroy American culture. Their goal was to destroy American culture. All you gotta remember is that these were Marxists from Germany who fled Hitler, came here to the United States, seeking refuge, but determined to destroy capitalism and believing that the center of the capitalist menace was the United States. They were unable to stir up revolt among workers. They had to find other groups in place of workers to use, to manipulate. They had a plan. Their plan was to encourage, for example, promiscuity and then tell the pregnant woman that she's a victim. Tell the people with AIDS that they're victims. Their plan was to, for example, encourage drug use and then tell the addicted people that they are victims. Everybody encounters prejudice. This is a third example. I encounter prejudice. You encounter prejudice. But tell various racial minorities that they are victims. Then you get all these victims together and tell them that they are victims of the government. They are victims of the government. Case in point, why bother fumigating the jungle in Colombia? This is useless. We're, uh, we're making the poor villagers unhappy in Colombia. They're trying to make money by, by growing cocaine, growing coca plants. Uh, this is useless. What we need is uh, drug treatment. Uh, we don't need to be spending money on war. We need to be spending money on poverty. We have poor people here in the United States. All these victims that need money. We don't even need to be sending uh, men to the uh, to the space station up in the space because we need that money for the victims here. And the, a relentless barrage. You notice how negative the news is. It's because these people are engaged in a relentless barrage of criticism. Criticism, they call it, they have a name for their plan. It's called critical theory. It's not named very well. It's not a a theory which is critical, it is a theory of criticism, constantly harping about the government. Most of their complaints are illogical, illogical. It often escapes your attention if you don't examine it, if you don't know what they're up to. You can examine their criticisms and find how illogical they are. They're trying to amass a group of protesters looking for more handouts looking for freedom from responsibility to overthrow this government these people vote for crooked politicians crooked politicians crooked politicians 
who corrupted this country from within so that these original Marxist theorists can succeed in overthrowing this government who put Barack Obama in the White House. These people.